Okay, Freddie, lovely to see you again and thank you for doing this video. Um, today we're going to be talking about the role of the state in society and economy. I just wondered, um, what role do you think the state should play in society and economy? Um, well, it's my personal opinion that uh, the state should play a minimal role uh, in the society and economy or as minimal as it can um, in the sense that uh, people should be left to develop for themselves, people should uh, take on responsibility for their own lives um, in both society and the economy um, as it helps to develop the individual, uh, the individual kind of true uh, ability. Um, and I think this because a state that gets too involved in society and economy often um, often curbs uh, the development of the individual and often leads to people being reliant on the state uh, to provide for them uh, in society. Uh, however, um, after you know studying the likes of John Rules, uh, I've come to a realisation that uh, there does need to be some involvement uh, from the state in society and economy. Okay, so, so I mean, obviously, you're, to listen to you, it's fair to say that Robert Nozick is perhaps you'd be a big influence in yeah, terms yeah. of the minimal state, mm. but also obviously this debate. I mean, he he was re rebutting John Rawls when mm. he was writing. Um, could we be a, perhaps kind of dig a little bit deeper? Yeah. Can we name specifically the areas that you feel? Um, the state should get involved in. So yeah. list, let's list some areas. What should it do? Um, I do believe things such as education, uh, there should be uh, an element of uh, providing healthcare from, uh, sorry, education from the state, as yes. well as healthcare, which I'll go on to uh, in a bit, but education, because we do need a society that has been educated to mm. some degree, a society that... Uh, you know, understands then how to develop itself after mm. it's been uh, educated, uh, and also healthcare because um, oftentimes people get you know horrible diseases, mm. horrible um, kind of afflictions, and they do they do need help from the uh, state to some degree uh, with healthcare to be able to overcome these. Okay, um, and in terms of kind of more general protections you, you would think things like enforcing laws oh yeah the rule of law yeah there's like i guess the the, the harm principle comes into play that mm. um uh, obviously it was was it js mill yes thing? that was his idea and um uh yeah so protection of things like uh, the rule of law upholding the rule of law mm. and protection of uh, property rights and contracts and things like that and um, you know preventing people from harming each other Mm. something the state needs to be involved in. Okay. So, <clears throat> we accept then that the welfare state needs to exist mm. in terms of education and yeah. health. Um, if you were standing for election now, mm. would you argue that, you'd obviously think the Labour Party would perhaps be too big state for you. Yeah, yeah. Would you, what would you say to Boris Johnson, um, perhaps, about the size of the state. Do you think the Conservatives are getting the size of the state right or wrong at the moment? Well, it's interesting you should say, obviously, of the election coming up um, and Boris Johnson, he's faced criticism on the protection of N the NHS in terms mm -hmm. of the provision of universal health care. And he, he's made a commitment to keep the NHS, keeping, you know, pumping billions more pounds into the NHS. Um, and I think, as we we discussed before, the NHS is that topic in British politics, which uh, you know, a politician can't you know threaten to uh, introduce more uh, private elements into the NHS to expose it to market forces. Mm. Uh, politicians kind of feel a need, um, generally for their popularity, I guess, to mm. uphold the uh, principle of universal health care. Mm. And I think that getting back to your point, I think that perhaps Boris Johnson. Maybe this is more of a political motive for him just to say he's going to pump billions more in. But mm. perhaps we'd be more efficient to mm. expose NHS to uh, you know, market forces in some areas mm. to improve efficiency, mm. uh, which we can see is 
you know, suffering at the moment with lack of hospital beds, mm. poor equipment in some places. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things in terms of, say, um, healthcare for older people mm. at the moment, there's this kind of argument that uh, people should be able to retain their property. Um, so, for example, um, if you're being cared for as a, an old person, mm. you're getting this in terms of um, universal health care. Yeah. Um, do you feel that people who are getting that kind of health care need to contribute more, such as the sale of their house, to pay for their health care in their old age? Or, um, or, do you think, yeah. or do you think that the state should foot the bill? It's a yeah, difficult one. Yeah, because, it's difficult, yeah. yeah. But, but what do you think? These are the questions um, that are concerning us, aren't yeah. they? I, obviously, with the the generation of the, the boomers kind of going into, getting into... That's a baby boomer generation. Yeah, 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 getting into old age now. Um, that's an increasing burden on uh, society for us, you know, should we be paying for them? Should we be paying for their healthcare and keep pumping billions and billions into the NHS? Well, as you said, should we, you know, should they kind of take some of this burden themselves? Mm. Very difficult question in terms of if you you know, tell them to take the burden for themselves. It's kind of a, a deal breaker in terms of getting their vote. Obviously, Theresa May, with her, her dementia kind of statements back in 2017, faced a bit of a backlash. Mm. Um, and whether people should take responsibility for themselves by selling their houses, maybe in terms, I, I believe maybe the family around them should help if they can, if mm. there is uh, their, their sons or daughters or grandsons, granddaughters, they should be helping to contribute for this. But obviously if they're, they've got a, a family who can't help them uh, and they, they're also you know, lacking funds themselves, then I think it's probably up to the state to step in and help. Uh, to I, one of the things that's interesting is there's a kind of almost a set of double standards, aren't there? So baby boomers at the moment, um, essentially retired younger you retired when they were 60 perhaps mm -hmm. um 65 getting their full pension they also want universal health care into their old age mm -hmm. but younger people such as yourself mm -hmm. are paying for university education yeah. so in terms of your kind of philosophy do you think it correct that students for higher education, make a contribution to their, yeah, to going to university. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think we should go back to the point where, you know, it's free mm. uh, university. I think it is. It is a choice, and um, you know, you can choose to spend your money on it if you want, if you so please. Um, and I, I don't think the question is, should it be free or not? I think the question is more should the fees be that high? Mm. I do think you do have to take it upon yourself to pay for it, but you know, you calculate some of the fees and then the, uh, the contact hours you get in university, especially me applying to university now is one of the kind of key areas I look at. Uh, is it really worth nine, nine or grand um, mm. to be able to go to university? But yeah, I do believe that, um, that the, the individuals should you know, take the responsibility to pay for education as you're taking the choice for its further education mm. or direction. Mm -hmm. Do you um, think, going back to say John Rawls's enabling state and John Rawls's um, veil of ignorance, um, do you think it correct that all students, all young people are treated the same? So for example, what I'm saying is some young people are obviously more affluent, have come from more affluent backgrounds than others. Yeah. So for some people, university and paying to university is not something they have to worry about because yeah. parents are there to support them. Mm. And then for other people from different backgrounds, um, that's obviously a much bigger financial decision they've got to make. Mm. Um, do you think that there should be some kind of means testing of um, university fees, or do you think that's not a good idea? What do you think? So as in uh, the government kind of help help people who are less, less affluent. Yeah, so, so for example, do you think more affluent middle class students should perhaps pay more and some working class and perhaps underclass students should pay less? Uh, I, uh, well, 
I'm sure answer to that, I'd say is no, I don't think there should be a two tier system. Mm. I think at the end of the day, people should pay the same. Mm. But I think that as the people who say less affluent people, people who perhaps can't, um, you know, they can't access higher education and maximize their like, kind of full academic potential. Um, you know, they should, they should get an element of help from the university, I think. There should mm. be more kind of bursaries to mm. going out to kind of the right people, the people, mm. the most gifted students who mm. do need some financial help. Mm. But no, I don't think there should be a two-tiered system. Um, and it's, it's kind of the same goes, just kind of a bit of a separate point with uh, getting into universities, mm. with the, some universities have, have, you know, brought in a two-tiered grading system. Mm. Uh, it's which you know the less affluent students might have to get lower grades mm. uh, because perhaps they weren't receiving the best education mm. at school, and then uh, maybe people in more affluent schools uh, they're required to get higher grades. And I, I don't agree with that either. I think that um, in a way it's kind of patronising. I think that they should have to achieve the same grades. They shouldn't have to show their academic potential in the same way. Mm be able to achieve this level and actually get into the university on, on kind of proper terms. Okay, okay. Um, going back to the um, idea of the smaller state, mm. you talked a little bit little bit about how the smaller state and the state doing less for individuals can actually be good for people. Yeah. Could you perhaps explain that in a bit more detail? Yeah. So uh, we've seen you know, in, in recent kind of decades, the, the growth of the welfare state in the UK, um, you know, social security, unemployment benefits, all this, and it's, in a way, it's kind of hampered an individual's uh, development. Um, mm. They've been, you know, relying on the state for these uh, kind of welfare benefits. and Perhaps it's taken away that element of rugged individualism that uh, the smaller state brings. Mm. Um, and yeah, kind of going on to the smaller state, it brings this element of, you know, you have to take on responsibility for yourself to be able to achieve what you want. You don't, you don't have to rely on like the state or, or anything like that. And it, it kind of, it allows you to develop as an individual, intellectually, uh, psychologically, mm. um, you know, become more resilient in a sense. Mm. So um, you think a kind of unintended consequence of the state doing too much for people. So, if the state, if the state does too much, what does that do to the individual? You know, I kind of, I think it kind of creates a, a, an individual whose development has been is being curbed, an individual who's relying on others um, to be able to succeed. Um, although I think it's it will be wrong to completely discount any yeah. form of. Uh, you know, developmental individuals and to those who, who truly need it, but an overinflated state that's mm -hmm. providing too much can, I think, create this uh, individual who's relying and weaning off the state. So, mm. so you, you're very much the state's got to give a, a hand up, mm. but but not a hand out. Yeah, no. is, is is what you were saying? So, yeah. uh, if we just look at um, just two key thinkers in a little bit of detail, what would you think? What do you like the best about Nozick's ideas? I, I, I admire Nozick's ideas on kind of on, on the individual uh, with, with tax, I think. Mm -hmm. um, although I, you might you might say you say you know you, you kind of contradict yourself with well there needs to be tax to provide some element of um, of, of state to to you know give the, the hand up. Um, but I, I kind of I do admire the the tax is theft kind of quote. I think that in in Western societies nowadays, you know, tax taxes far too high. You know, with the, some of the highest earnings are taking forty percent off them, um, which I think is you know it, it's not fair in a moral sense, but also um, in an economic sense, uh, it's proven that you know lower taxes create that kind of more disposable income for the individual which mm. they can then spend in the, in the economy on cons uh, you know, consumer goods and then the firm as well, uh, lowering corporation tax can encourage investment which mm. will create demand in the economy. That's interesting. Um, and we'll just finish up on, on this last point. Um, if you look at say the small state and neoliberals such as 
nosic and round. They're very ambivalent about the existence of, of society or organic society. Yeah. Would, you, would you agree with that? Mm. Or, or, or are you a, a stronger believer that there is a, a thing called society? Yeah, I, I do. They well, obviously they believe in the atomistic society. You know, it's just a collection of individuals kind of interacting, doing, yeah, doing their own thing, interacting in the world. Um, to a large extent, I disagree. Um, my personal experience: I'm a men, well, member of a school, a member of a boarding community within the school, and I do believe to an extent there is an organic society. Um, and, and it needs preserving in a sense, the school needs preserving. I enjoy that my boarding lifestyle, which I think needs preserving. It, it brings me kind of psychological uh, well-being I'm with my friends. And uh, I think there is an element that um, we do thrive in groups. Um, mm. And I think that is that is kind of fundamental human nature in a way. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I would say I admit that the, the existence of some form of an organic society. Okay, well that's really, really interesting. So I think it's fair to conclude that you feel that that there is a role for the state, mm. but it too much can be harmful for the individual. Yeah, I'd say yeah, detrimental mm. uh, to the okay. individual. Okay, and it, it, it's a very difficult balance yeah. to strike, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, would you finish on, 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 on one last point? Um, if you were giving the political parties advice about the size of the state and the individual for the upcoming election, um, what would that advice be? Uh, either to win the election for themselves? Uh, well, not so much to win the election, but more is what, what the right thing to do for the country would be. Um, which isn't always popular. Yeah, right? yeah. so this is, will be severely unpopular. Uh, and yeah, I, I probably, I don't think either candidate would get any of those <laughs> this policy, but, uh, you know, exposing the, the NHS to more market elements, mm -hmm. uh, privatisation, mm -hmm. um, to try and correct these uh, inefficiencies that lie within the NHS, um, I think would, would be, you know, a good tactic. It would reduce our, our ballooning government spending on it, you know, billion, billion, billions more every year. Uh, I think it's just kind of getting out of hand. Um, and do you think it would improve care? I I think so because I think you know it'd be forced to you know to cut costs. It'd be forced to innovate, mm. um, and there would be this new equipment, these new med this new medication, perhaps you know increased building of um, of hospitals to allow for more bed space. Because mm. um, too many times. People are told there aren't enough beds. You can't come in. I, I don't think that is the the kind of role of of the NHS. You know, the role of the NHS is to provide universal healthcare, and perhaps to be able to provide it for everyone. Market forces are needed uh, to, to make it more efficient. Exactly. Different way of looking at things. Okay, and you're and you're very right in saying that um, politically. Um, Meant discussing what you've just discussed mm. now is almost it, it's almost off the agenda. Isn't yeah, it? I think yeah. only Nigel Farage has mm. brought up the idea mm. of um, yeah private for, private um, forces in mm. the uh, NHS. Well, that's really interesting. Thank you much, Freddie, and thanks for talking to us. Thank you. All right, let's see. So we, so we can work out. So we'll stop this here.